Hi, welcome to Street Priest Ministries. I'm your host, Brother Jay, as we're taking the Gospels back to the streets. Today's drive through message is, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. And we'll begin at Matthew 5.13 in a minute. These are the best of times. These are the worst of times. These are biblical times. And as the weeks roll, roll, as the weeks roll along, these words I say become pregnant with more me. As you see, calamities are still going on around the world. It's been going on for months now. Volcanoes popping off. Um, magnitude anywhere from 6 to 9.5 on the Richter scale. Shaking the whole world. God's shaking the whole world. You got uh, typhoons and tornadoes. And Pestilence, you had rat infestations and locusts. Like biblical time. It's like on Pharaoh's day. That's why I keep saying the same thing over and over, over and over again every week. And you got darkness coming up on the land. Sandstorms and causes darkness too as well. As well as strange sightings in in our uh, heavens. But do not be dismayed, do not be, do not despair, do not be alarmed. God is, if you're in God, you're in Christ, he's got us. We don't have to worry. I'll read Psalm 91 to give you relief again. No, it's no need for us to fret. That's what the world does, because they have no hope. Our hope is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, the Savior, and God the Father, God Almighty. And He will see us through. Now, this is going to be a brief message, very brief. I just want to hit home this point. And even though we're going to, Matthew 5, 13 is the text, we're going to go over to John. I think I'm going to start in John. Um, by the way, I know some of you are anxious to get back to the Apocrypha, and we will. But as I told you, the Holy Spirit pumps my brakes and sends me another direction. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be obedient. But get you... It's upside down. No, so get you a copy of the 1611 King James Bible. It has the Apocrypha in it, like it originally had for 200 years. Or get a separate book of the Apocrypha so you can study with us. It's giving you plenty of time. I've, I've been interrupted, I think, a couple of times, two or three times, I don't know. But I do what I feel God's Spirit orders me to do. Changes my direction. I told you that from the get-go. This might occur. So I know some of you are anxious to get back to the Apocrypha. We will. God willing. But these times that we're in right now, these messages that God is moving me to teach on is very, very important right now. Every single one of them. Then I broke away from the message to deliver. It's a bullseye on target message for right now, times we're in, which is biblical times. Now, John chapter 1, well, let's start We'll start from the very beginning. <clears throat> John 1. We studied the book of John, already read through the whole book a while ago. And we've taught in and out of it ever since. <clears throat> but actually, I taught from Genesis 1 and Revelation 22. But sporadic in some books, but we covered most of it going back and forth. Anyway. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. 
And the Word was God. Christ is the Word. He's the Logos. He is the expression of the God here. He is the voice that spoke the worlds into existence. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was anything made that was made. And that's Christ you are talking about. Christ spoke the world into existence. He is the word of God. He is the creative agent. He is the visible one of the God here. He said, you've seen me, you've seen God the Father. In him was life, and the life was the light of me. What does that mean? You're conscious, though. God creates you conscious. It's that voice within you to tell you when you're doing right or wrong. That's why God said man has no excuse. Look the law in his own heart. Now, of course, you can sear your conscience. Conscience can get hard. And you're no longer are regulated by your conscience. You're regulated by doers that will. And you're in a serious, serious danger zone of hellfire. If that's you. A lot of Hollywood doesn't turn God off to them. And then went past the point of no return. They have a reprobate mind and God will turn you over. He said that. He said it'll harden your heart when you go so far. Then turn you over to your reprobate mind. Turn you over to yourself and be damned. So you don't want to trifle with God and His grace. And you won't have no desire once you reach that stage to come to God whatsoever. There's no point in even trying to win your soul at that stage. Because conviction is gone. If your conscience is seared. Conscience is like leather. Nothing penetrates. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. The only way Paul said, I believe it's Second Corinthians 4 4. He said, if our gospel be hid, it's hid whom the God of this world have blinded the mind of those. Unless, unless God, the Holy, no man, Jesus said, no man comes to the Father and say the Spirit joy. Unless the Holy Spirit does the initiating, God does the initiating. It's a lot of people that just live happy lives, go right on into hell. It's a fact. You are so lucky if God has called you. And if anybody watching Street Priest Ministry, God has called you. No. Talking to you. Sitting right there, God called you. Yeah, you. You are called. You might think, oh, I just dropped in because uh, I see this cat, so he's kind of entertaining. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't see nothing entertaining about me, really. I just try not to trying to spice the message up so it don't be boring. But, but the point I'm making, God calls you. There's no accidents in the kingdom. And he calls you, furthermore, from the foundation of the world, before the worlds were even formed, we were called. Now imagine how important we are for God to whisper you and I name before the worlds were formed. Now let's go back over to Matthew 5.13. This is serious business. That's why God, Christ said, enter ye in at the straight gate. Salvation is very serious business. I'm in the soul winning business. 
take it very seriously. I've been to hell, my friend. Why wouldn't I take it seriously? <laughs> Even though it was a brief trip, it lasted. It had a lot of a lot of mileage out of it. That brief trip, going on three dec over three decades, a lot of mileage on that brief trip. But the call of God was on my life, like it's on you. you know, God got various ways. So not as drastic as I went through, but I know it's a lot of people. Excuse me. I mean, it's a plethora of people that you'll find on the internet that's been to hell now. Young, old, of every ethnicity. Been to hell. Very sex, male and female. It's a man. Now, we're going to go ahead and get into this message. And like I say, it's going to be a brief. It's going to probably be the briefest message. This is actually a Sergeant Salt message. It's a boot camp message here. <clears throat> to get you marching on battlefield earth in these last days <clears throat> and God's end time redemption is coming up you need soldiers not babies give my teaching too many babes in the church too many babes in the church babe tarts satire too many babes now you'd have been on the street priest and I have some that's been uh, on the street priest for Quite a few years. I look at you as the you know you're the mature crew, a street crew. By the way, I'm so glad. That's a good segue into what I wanted wanted to ask you. Really, if I asked you this, but um, well, let me see. See if I can remember where it is. Hold your space. Never know what Brother Jay, where you're going to end up. <laughs> Our plan is no plan. Really. You got too much conformity religion out there as it is. <clears throat> A lot of you are sitting in morgues, mortuaries, mausoleums. <clears throat> They're too predictable. The Holy Spirit is referred to like a mighty Russian wind. And I say a, a wind is very unpredictable. Now, God's word, if you're ever settled in heaven, you can count on. Let me see if I can find this verse for you. If not, we just have to skip it, but I'm going off the cuff. When you get older, you start to forget things. I mean, at one point, I could whip out probably 300 passages in my heyday. But uh, start to get older. Those glory days are just that. I don't get this. We're gonna go ahead and move on. But the nation right now is going. This nation here is, is fighting. I know what it's like. We got some very evil people that's in power over us. That's doing some very evil things. And God said, enough already. Doing some very, very evil things. 
We know it's free in Palestine, in the United States, and all over the world. From these uh, satanic globalist goblins. As hell been on. You heard me say many times, exterminating us like a roach. They see themselves as a giant can of rain to ex exterminate us roaches. Too many of us on the planet, in their eyes, 7.5 billion approximately. It's too much for them. They're going crazy. They want the earth to themselves. And uh, this is where we have to think. And thank God, God raised up President Trump to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these charges. That's good for us. Okay, looks like I came out. I thought I had it memorized. But I don't. And it was important that I... Oh, I have it. Okay. What do you know? I came through like Seattle, so... I want you to turn, before we get into the teaching, we're going to read a prayer out the Bible. Read one. Now, you know me. I pretty much, you don't see Brother Jay, I pray in the closet when I Christ instruct. So when you pray, you enter into your closet, you pray in the secret. Then you help me follow see the secret. Reward you. I try and do my best to dot my eyes and cross my T's with the outright clarity of the orders given by Christ and given. He said, do not sound a trumpet before you give in secret. And Father, Heavenly Father, to see in secret, shall word you over so I don't sound a trumpet. Let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. And when I fast, like Christ said, wash your face, anoint your face, oh well, don't appear to me in his fast. And so he feels sorry for you. And you get uh, pats on the back for being a holy, quote unquote. It's the things that people don't pay no attention to, Christ said to do. Well, we're going to read this prayer, because it's in the Bible, it's actually just a verse, but we're going to turn it into the prayer right now. For this, uh, this nation is being strangled by this, this python spirit. They don't want to let go. Let's back up. We're going to see, we'll read a little bit about God's biblical times. Chronicles 7 12. Let's start there. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. And have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heavens, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. Doesn't it sound like biblical times to you? That's what's going on now. That's what I keep saying. We're in biblical times. What God's doing now. He's got to get man's attention first, and the best way to do that is with calamities, pestilences. Gets that attention, then man starts crying out to God for help, starts praying. But you got to shake him up first. Earthquakes, volcano. Excuse me. And that's what's going on, getting man's attention. Slap him around a few times. You get better attention, slap somebody first when they're ignoring you or spaced out or whatever. They get clear. The slap gives you clear. Real quick. Clears them cobwebs on your brain. And that's what God's doing. Waking people out of these zombie states that they're in. Let me read this again. And the Lord appeared in the song by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself. God chose this place for himself 
the United States, give them a teaching, the United States in the Bible, where I taught that you, the United States is clearly in the Bible, Isaiah 18, and taught through it, that was years ago, and proved it. Think this great nation wouldn't be in the Bible? Let's produce more Bibles, bar none, than any nation on earth, and send, send out more missionaries with Bibles than any, any nation on earth. If any, if any people, verse 14, and this is where we're going to pray together. Are you ready? Let me go rehearse first. Excuse me, if my people, my bad. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's a promise. The God made, it's a conditional promise. You got to do what he tells you to do first. But it's a conditional promise that he will honor. A fair old Lord, that word is said on that. God is not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man that he shall repent if he said, and shall he not make him good or have he spoken? If he said, and shall he not do it? If he spoken, shall he not make it good? God's word is forever settled in heaven. This is a promise that you and I are going to, we're going to read, and this is like our prayer, and keep this promise. If two or three agree, that which is bound on earth is bound in heaven. That's which is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. So we're going to bind this promise on earth. We're going to read it again together. Bind this on earth in Christ Jesus' mighty name. Yeshua HaMashiach. We're going to buy this in his mighty name. And we're going to lose warring angels on the end to wreak havoc to get this nation out of this stagnant quagmire we've seen this be in for a long time now. We've been in this stagnant quagmire for a long time. We've halted here too long. It's time to move out. As Joshua told the people. Now, let's read it together. If my people, say it, if my people, follow with me, which are called by my name, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves shall humble themselves and pray. What we're doing now is like a prayer recital. And seek my face. We are seeking God's face right now. We ask him to honor this word that he's given us. And turn from their wicked ways. Yes, sir. We're turning. That which offends God is wicked ways. Then I will hear them from heaven. God's going to hear us from heaven. Two or three agreeing, and I know I've got at least two or three out here reading along with me and agreeing. And I will forgive their sin and will heal their land, the United States. And we bind that promise on earth. This is bound in heaven. In Christ Jesus' mighty name, we also lose warring angels to wreak havoc on the enemy. And wherever his comfort zones is, his positions, tear them down, tear down his altars. Bind all witchcraft, sorcery, voodoo, hexes, vexes from the enemy. May they return sevenfold on their own head. We, bind, we claim this. In Christ Jesus' mighty name. And we mean it. And I hope you mean it. I, mean, I want to get that out the way. Now let's go. That's going to be a brief message. This message is going to be 
I got a bullet train stop here. Alright, back to Matthew 5.13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Salt is a preservative. They didn't have refrigerators back then. Everything was jerkified. You put salt to preserve it. Just keeps it, slows the decay of food, the rotten in the food. Ye are the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its savor, it's become weak. It lost its, strength, its salty strength. Where, where shall it be salted? What is the salt good for? Christ is asking. It is thenceforth good for nothing. It's good for nothing salt. Got a lot of good for no, a lot of good for nothing salt in the church world. A lot of good for nothing salt in the church world. They lost their salt in this years ago. They're following Pastor Blind in these giant temples of mammon, filling stadiums by the millions. Raking in millions of babies. That's what we got today. The Big Ten uh, service. Preacher Tainment before. Writing many books. And getting rich up in many books. And then totally turn turncoat. Just like Judas did. Sold out. and put their truth and Bible down in exchange for mammon and his little trinkets, mammon's trinkets. That's what we got today. That's why it's so sad to see the sheep scattered, confused, because this is all they've been looking at for the past few years, is this madness. These shock jock pimps. For Satan, they ain't for Jesus, that's for sure. Building these megalo churches, megalo, megalodon churches. Read this again. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savior, its strength, wherewith shall it be salted? It is neither good for, it is. It is therefore, or therefore, good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of me. In another chapter, he said, ain't fit for the dunghill. Ain't fit for a pile of turds. Salt has lost its salt. Read this one more time. Ye are the salt of the earth. Say it. I am the salt of the earth. Personalize it. I am the salt of the earth. We preserve this corrupt earth. This earth is steeped in corruption. Wherever you at, whether if you're in government, you're a Daniel, give a teaching on Daniels in government. You preserve the rightness. You're not taking bribes. You're not getting set up for blackmail and so on and so on. You're not corrupt. You come to work, do your job, and you go home. You're not out to steal the company blind, or the government blind, and which is us blind, the taxpayer. You are the salt. We're the moral compass of the world. It's salt. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing, but to cast out and to be trodden down under the foot of me. And that's what you got in a lot of doormats for Jesus out there. Just the world just walking right over. A lot of these pathetic churches. These saltless churches, they lost their soul. Saltless. First church of the saltless. A lot of them out there. 
good for that. The world wipes their feet on them like a, a, do, a, a doormat of salt. Salty doormat. They aren't resisting the devil and his crew. They aren't on battlefield or form. Against principalities, power, spiritual wisdom, and fire places with their full armor on. They even gave up on all that. It's tea time. It's time to sit in a hammock with a big glass of lemonade. It's a country club. Country clubs for Jesus. All over the land. Here we go again. Christ speaking. This is where we get to title. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. We're the light. Christ said, now I read that earlier. Christ said, I'm the light. He left. He said, now you're the light. We're the light in this dark world. This world is steeped in darkness. And we're the light. Light gives revelation. Light reveals if you're in danger of it. It provides a safe path if it's another light. We're children of light. We're salt and we're light in this world. And God got a, a clock ticking on this world, by the way. And it's almost time up. Um, for the Gentile age. It's God's grace that it's going as long as it did. It's going as long as it has. Then wake up. These are the last days. We are the light of the world. A city that sit on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. You don't light a candle and stick it under the bed. Or behind the dresser, but out on 